Yo, what's up guys? Uh, here with Zach today. We're gonna be showing you guys how to use, or actually not how to use, how to create those cool three photos. Um, so Zach is gonna kind of explain it quickly for you right now. Here I've got the Nashika N8000. It's a 3D stereoscopic camera. It has four different lenses, which gives you the 3D effect because each lens is slightly apart. It allows you to have that depth from side to side. So we're gonna take some portraits right now. Get the camera. One, two, three. I gotta wind it first, actually. You didn't actually take the <laughs> No, you gotta So one, two, three. Cool. So uh, this camera works really well when there's something in the foreground, the background, and the middle ground. See right here we have our foreground object, so Jamal's gonna point it kind of towards me. And then Jamal's the middle ground, and then the background is, so there's a three-way separation. That works the best. So let's do it so we, I can kind of see maybe the curtains too. All right. Let's do where you're standing on both. Yeah. And then if you can, have one foot out, and then I'll be yeah. one up. In my crotch? Yeah. One, two, three. Cool. One thing with this that's a little bit limiting is that there's um, the, through the viewfinder, there's only like a, a vertical box. So almost portrait, because uh, what it does is um, it uses one slide of film for every two pictures. So it cuts it in half. So because of that, your means that your field of view is a lot smaller. So what you're seeing through the viewfinder and what actually gets printed is half a frame, so it's top to down. So that's why sometimes it's good to like figure out your angle. So yeah, Jamal, if you just have your hand there, and I kind of go this way. Whoa. That looks cool like that. So another thing um, that I learned too, is that the, they say that the best focal uh, distance between the camera and the, the subject is six feet. So if you could get something like an arm or some sort of object like the stool, further in front of the camera, or towards the camera, but then your subject is a little bit, um, is between that six feet, you'll be able to have this as a really good um, foreground object that moves. So when we see this, we'll also see side to side from his arm. I don't know if that made sense, I hope it does. <laughs> I didn't even need to get two goals. So uh, you want to go outside, downstairs? We can do that, yeah. So we wanted to change uh, perspectives. We wanted to change our scene. Uh, we went outside. One uh, notable thing, something worth noting, is that there's only three apertures on this camera. Uh, for outdoors, there's a sun, which is f19. There is a Sun with a cloud, which is F11, and house with a cloud, which is F8. So right now it's like pretty bright out, even though it's overcast. So we're gonna do uh, sun with a cloud right now. Yeah. One, two, three. Cool. Picture of you? Yeah, I do one of Ian like that. Yeah? Yeah. yeah okay. It'll be like a reverse shot. It'll be cool. One, two, three. Oh, end of the row. 
So folks, make sure you wind it like every other camera because I have fucked up rolls before. It's the same uh, procedure. You just uh, take this little secure thing off and press this back here. And you wind it like normal. Honestly, the, the yeah. build of this camera is not the greatest, so you gotta be careful when you're doing stuff, especially cranking it, because there's so many times where I think it's broken, but it's not. So I've been shooting with this camera for a while, and I've been trying to up the game of some of the things that I've been doing with it. One thing is drawing on the photos, so I've been able to uh, use a tablet and draw on pictures. Um, that adds a little bit of uh, more creativity to it. But another thing that I tried out um, maybe a week ago or a couple weeks ago, I guess maybe even a month ago, was I actually put a piece of red gel on my flash and I shot a couple of pictures of Jamal and uh, it actually had this cool red cast to it. And uh, I don't know, it's just something that I wanted to try and see if I could spice things up a little bit because when you see so many of these and people point their hands out and stuff like that, it could get a little bit boring. They say that for this camera, the, like, the, the max you could do is ISO 200. I heard that's a lie. I know someone that ha actually has this camera as well and he shoots like 400, 800 and stuff. I have not tested that out yet, so I'm not sure how it would be in a real life situation, but I'm going to test that out in the future. So I'll let you know, but as of right now, ISO 200, 36 exposure, because you get half the amount of shots, like I said earlier, so you'd only get 18 shots on a roll. All right, so that was our quick little walk around kind of shoot tutorial for how to use the Nashika. Um, there's a lot more that goes into actually creating the whole effect. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be getting into the actual editing of an Ashika. Well, obviously first you gotta develop your film, so we're gonna skip that whole process and we'll get right down to the actual editing process of creating that cool effect. And so that it's not choppy like a lot of people do, so that it's actually nice and smooth like some of the Nishikas you've already seen in this video.